Hey, hey guys, this is John Carnell, and I am finishing up the third video in this May 2021 dev drop around the topic of how to deal with rate limits. Um, in this video, I'm going to introduce to you how you can use caching in your application or integration to reduce the number of API calls that you make out to the Genesis Cloud uh, platform. And these techniques can actually be used for anything, but there's a really good reason why we want to use caching. And that is a lot of times as application developers, it's very easy to fall into the trap of just not realizing the costs associated with making an API call. And suddenly you get uh, rate limited by your cloud provider. I remember this happened to me very early on when I was building a service here, at, uh, here for Genesis Cloud. And I was just making AWS calls all over the place, not realizing that eventually I was going to hit a point where I was going to get rate limited. I had to introduce caching at that time, and it really helped solve the problem. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and share my screen now, and I'm going to walk through the flow we walked through in the last uh, screen to kind of set up our problem. So if you remember our last video, excuse me. If you remember in our last video, we had looked at this hypothetical web app that supervisors could use to look up queue observation metrics associated with the various Genesis cloud queues that they were responsible for managing. Uh, it had a web-based application that was calling a homegrown Spring Boot microservice who in turn was making two calls out to Genesis cloud um, to one, take the queue name that was passed in and look up its ID and then take its ID to then go turn around and look up the queue observation metrics. Since it was Spring Boot, we used the Java SDK. But when you look at these kind of call patterns, you'll find that there's some opportunities to reduce the number of API calls that you're actually making. So the first thing that struck me when I looked at this, because this is a conversation I've had with a lot of our customers and other developers in the past, is when you, you've got to really understand uh, the notion of data velocity. How often is the data that you're actually going to look up going to change? If it's not going to change very often, it's often a very good candidate for caching. The other thing is you have to look at the true criticality of the data being up to date with the business. If you ask a business partner, hey, uh, how up to date is this data have to be? Almost nine times out of the 10, they'll be like, oh, we need the most important, always up to date. When in reality, if you turn the question around and say, how up to date does this have to be? And would you want more performance and a little bit of trade off if we could cash some of the results and reduce the number of calls to the vendor? When you ask the question that way, a lot of times when you really start digging on it, most people will be like, maybe I only need the data to be one second or one minute or five minutes up to date in order to still make good business decisions. So when I look at this particular problem out here, I see that we could definitely go and uh, cache the queue name and ID lookup so that we didn't have to keep calling out there. In most organization queues don't get created and destroyed a lot during a day. They might not ever, depending on your business model. And for metrics, um, it really comes down to how important your business needs to have absolutely up-to-date metrics. So we're gonna go through, I'm gonna show you using an open source project called Caffeine and Caffeine will allow us to implement uh, what's called a near cache right in memory inside of our Spring Boot application. So let's go ahead, uh, let's go take a look at the code and I'll show you how to set up Caffeine, how to configure it and then how to annotate your code. All right, so I'm gonna go over here and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna find our pom.xml so that we can add the caffeine uh, jar dependencies to our project. Pretty simple and straightforward. There's only one dependency. And what I found is caffeine is pretty standalone. You rarely run into like third-party conflicts or anything when you're using caffeine. So that's like step one. Step two is actually configuring the cache inside of your application. And that's gonna be done in your application.yaml or your application.properties file, depending on how you, you set up your Spring Boot application. So out here, uh, you're gonna see under my spring, uh, spring configuration, I have a cache uh, attribute. And in there, I'm gonna provide two cache names. And you're gonna use these later on in, in, in our code, but there's gonna be a queue cache for mapping out the queue, uh, the queue name to the queue ID. And there's gonna be a metrics cache, which is going to hold the different data. Now in here, I'm gonna specify different configurations for each of these caches, because again, it comes back to 
data velocity, how often the data changes, and also business need as to how long the business can uh, choose to operate comfortably without having the most up-to-date data. So in this case, because I know that the QID to Q name doesn't change on a regular basis, I am going to set the expiration to be one day. So once I get a, a, a cash value from, from my uh, Genesis Cloud API call, I'm going to cache it. And I'm going to store no more than 500 records out there. Once I get over 500, I start ejecting the least most recently used records. And then you have to go basically call the API to get the data. Q metrics, it's a little bit more important to keep my metrics up to date. And so I'm only going to keep my metrics in my cache for about 60 seconds. In a really high volume environment, any calls to look up the same metrics over and over and over again would hit this cache environment and you would never see an API call. Okay, great. So we set up our configuration. So let's go out and let's look at how we're actually using it in code. So I wrapped all of my actual calls using my Java SDK out into what I call a proxy class, right? So that way it's all kind of wrapped behind there and that's all filled in. You know, we've got our calls to go look up the metrics. Um, down here, we've got our calls to go look up the queue name. Now, because I've got a, several examples that I'm using for other things in this particular project, I've decided to wrap the cache calls as a facade around my proxy. And what's going to happen is I have a get queue info, which is basically my name uh, lookup and my metrics uh, lookup. And I am going to use a um, cacheable annotation. Now in here, and that cacheable annotation, by the way, is uh, coming from the Spring framework. So caffeine plugs directly into uh, the Spring's cacheable annotation, and so I can just use it. And so now what's going to happen is I just have to provide the cache name. And any method call is going to take a combination of the parameters being uh, sent in. And it's basically going to take the results and store it in the cache. And so subsequent calls are going to check the cache first to see if there's data out there before they return. So let's go ahead now, I've done this work. Let's switch over here. I'm gonna walk through two scenarios. The first scenario is what's gonna happen without caching, all right? And then the second scenario is we're gonna hit a separate endpoint in our service that just hits our caching, caching uh, facade. And we're gonna see the difference in performance and behavior. So let's go ahead and flip over here. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go restart my Spring Boot service, just so that we're starting with a clean slate. I'm gonna come over here. Oh, I'm gonna clear my uh, screen and we're gonna run our get metrics call, which is just a Python script calling a couple of endpoints on our service with normal, which means that we're not doing any retry logic. We're not doing any caching. And I want you to just quick observe the behavior. So with normal, what you're gonna see is we're gonna start chugging through these calls. Now I'll take about anywhere from 0.15 to 0.2 seconds, but these are actually calling for each one of these Spring Boot calls, uh, each Spring Boot invocation, it's actually making two Genesis Cloud, uh, Genesis Cloud platform calls. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop this guy before it gets to the 150th call, because that will basically cause us to get rate limited. Um, you know, we saw in the previous video how that works. Now, let's go out, I'm gonna clear this again, and this time I'm going to call my Python script with uh, a cache, which is basically a cache attribute, which is basically going to hit a slightly different endpoint that's doing the exact same logic, except now we're going to call that cache wrapper that is going out there. And the first thing you're going to notice is we just book through these calls. We went through 350 calls. Most of the calls are sub second. And uh, we got through the calls with no rate limiting whatsoever. Now, normally, especially if you had watched the last video, you would see that we would have rate limiting right at about the 150th point. And if you look at our initial call, since I'm just calling the same thing over and over and over again, the first call took 0.4 seconds, 0.5 seconds. And after that, it became sub zero. So caching not only helped us increase performance because it reduced the number of distributed API calls, but it also helps a little bit with resiliency depending upon the length of your cache. You can cache data and you can lose actual connectivity or have an interruption of service with their cloud provider and you're not necessarily gonna need it. Remember, a lot of times we're not designing so that we catch all situations of failure, but instead we're looking at how to make our apps resilient and degrade gracefully. All right, I'm gonna stop our screen share right now and I'm just gonna wrap up with a few closing thoughts.
Uh, one, I think caching is a very simple and valuable tool to use in your applications and your integrations, particularly, particularly if you're going to be pulling our APIs and you're tending to work within a bounded set of data over and over and over again. You know, there are going to be situations, we tell most people it's okay to pull our APIs unless you're doing it so frequently that you're going to rate limit yourself or you truly need real-time data. In that case, we're going to steer people away from using our API. Instead, use our notification service, which does a data stream of data being pushed over a WebSocket. So um, I want to wrap everything up. I want to thank everybody uh, for sitting through all these different DevCast videos. And this is the end of our kind of our rate limiting mitigation strategy. I also want to let everybody know that on May 27th, we're going to do a, I'm going to be doing a talk uh, for a DevCast for about 45 minutes to an hour talking about a wide variety of resilience integration uh, integration patterns and how they can be applied within your own products. Uh, the link will be in the description. If you like the video, please uh, provide us feedback. If you don't like it, please provide feedback. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, use our forums. Uh, if there's a particular topic you wanna cover, we'd be happy to do it. So thanks everybody and have a great day.